the Revelation File Report and the Revelation File News Service is a joint production of Wallywood Ministries, a Houston-based tax-exempt nonprofit educational ministry. Much of the material used in these reports in the form of slides, photos, and videos are gleaned from the open public internet and are presented in a news, information, and education format for the purpose of informing the viewer of what we deem to be global trends and events pertinent to the fulfillment of end-time Bible prophecy. This is a faith-based, listener-supported program. These programs are not sold for profit. Hello everyone, I'm Wally Wood, and we welcome you to this edition of the Revelation File Report. As most of you have learned by now, that we are a news-focused and Bible prophecy ministry. Our whole purpose here is to educate and inform the believer of the trends, the signs that are relative to the soon return of Jesus Christ in the lifetime of one generation. And we have our uh, presentations at our websites available for you to view. And uh, beginning with wallywoodministries.com, uh, that is our uh, spirit-based uh, website. The revelationfile.com is our news-oriented website. From there, we break it down into the various different technologies that are pertinent to end-time Bible prophecy, that being digitomicscentral.com, our transparentworld.com, wallywoodtechnews.com, and most recently, our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash revfiletv. And that's where these programs that you're viewing now are archived. And you can go back to any one of them and pick them up and view them uh, at will. Uh, we also have tinyurl.com slash NWA archive. Now what that is, is our New World Academy. Once a month for the past several years, I've been a live guest on the Doc Green show on the internet, a monthly guest. And it's a two hour show and it comes on the, uh, on the internet Monday through Friday uh, from, uh, from one o'clock till three o'clock central time. And the last Thursday of each month I've been on his show and we've been talking at great depth about the trends and issues of our day. <clears throat> and again, relative back to end time Bible prophecy. So that's NWA Archive, and there you can find a collection of our past reports on his show. And uh, if you wish to spend a greater length of time, like two hours, viewing some of these things in greater depth. Most recently, I've uh, come on as a writer for the Katie Christian Magazine. And there we have accumulated our articles that I've been writing here for the past several months. And uh, you're invited to go there and you can print out these articles yourself and uh, enjoy again greater depth into the things that we talk about. So here of late within the last few weeks there's been a lot of talk about UFOs and one headline noted that it's the talk of the town in Washington DC now. Uh, CNBC noted that the new UFO report to Congress shows absolutely no evidence of aliens of course uh, to the right, you see the front cover of that report that was filed before the Congress just recently. U.S. News notes that it came out of the sky. U.S. releases highly anticipated UFO report. CNN Politics. U.S. intelligence community releases long-awaited UFO report. CNN reported on June 25th of, this, of 2021, investigators found no evidence that the sightings represented either extraterrestrial life or a major technological advancement by a foreign adversary like Russia or China, but acknowledge that is a possible explanation." End of quote. CBS News, June 25th. While there is no evidence the objects are extraterrestrial, senior government officials who briefed reporters said that nearly all of the incidents investigated remain unexplained, end of quote. Now, given the fact that they said nearly all of them have been, uh, remain at unexplained, well, there were 144 reports that they investigated, only one of which they could explain as being a deflating weather balloon. The rest of them remain unexplained. 
<clears throat> so I thought today we would take a closer look at this issue of the UFOs because everybody's curious about it and raise the question, are UFOs a part of the end times? And I quote from Luke 21, verse 25 in the Living Bible, which says, Jesus was speaking, then there will be strange events in the skies, warnings and evil omens. So even he suggested that there were going to be some things that are out of the normal, out of the ordinary, appearing in our skies, and they're part of the signs of the last days. In April of 2019, our programs number 10 through 12, we reviewed what we called Revelation 13 Revisited. And we focused primarily on a movie that came out in 1977 encounter, entitled Close Encounters of the Third Kind. And it was uh, directed by Steven Spielberg and written by Steven Spielberg. Uh, from one of the movie reviews that we picked up on, <clears throat> Close Encounters was perhaps the most important science fiction movie up to the point to introduce benign or even kind aliens, a sharp departure from the evil monster style of most earlier films. It popularized a number of motifs, most of which were drawn from earlier and purportedly genuine UFO encounters, such as alien abductions, small and thin aliens, otherwise known as grays, and UFOs covered in lights rather than the disc shapes more popular in the 50s and the 60s and so on. Now when I saw this movie, it brought my attention back to certain prophetic scriptures that I was aware of at the time. This was again 1977. And what it brought to mind as I watched this, and I began to see the encounter between the aliens and the humans, it brought to my attention these particular prophecies in Revelation 13. Speak in verse 3, and the whole earth was amazed at what they saw. And verse 4, they worshiped the dragon, meaning the devil, because he gave his authority to the beast. Now, focus on this because these are things that are we are looking for and anticipating and the Bible in Revelation 13 verses 3 and 4 address the fact that the dragon <clears throat> the devil is going to appear before men in the last days in such a way that they will end up worshiping the dragon because he passed his authority onto a human that being the Antichrist the beast Ephesians 2 verse 2 says that Satan is the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. 2 Corinthians 11:14, Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light and his ministers also are transformed as the ministers of righteousness. And as this review noted that this was the first time that in the movie form, that the aliens were presented as benign, benevolent, friendly to humans. And these scriptures come to mind. That Satan is able to transform himself into an angel of light and his ministers into ministers of righteousness. These are worth keeping in mind. 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 8 through 12. The coming of the lawless one, the Antichrist, is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. Now these scriptures are presented to you in light of the current interests and focused in our search for life in outer space. Back in the mid to late 80s, there was an effort underway here in Houston to bring together a what was called the fourth identity for the city, having to do with space entrepreneurism. And a network, a radio network, was being built around the space program. And interestingly, I was the founder of that network. 
And here I am with my partner as we started the Shuttle News Service back in 1985-86. And we broadcast uh, the missions of the shuttles, the space shuttles, to all the college radio stations. So in the course of our doing this, this consortium of companies came together and decided to build out Houston's third, fourth identity, being space entrepreneurism. And I was hired by that consortium of companies into this space smart concept. And so as a result of that, I started the Space and Telecom News Bureau, which became the very first news bureau exclusively for the space program. And this is in 1986 and 87. The picture you're looking at now, I'm sitting in the foreground at the table. And at the podium, you have astronaut Joe Allen and astronaut Gene Cernan. And Gene was the last man to walk on the moon. And they uh, gave their, their first news conference at our news conference at the old Albert Thomas Convention Center here in Houston during a space conference that we were holding at the time. It was during this era of my being in the space program, which I spent over 20 years, we interviewed astronauts, scientists, engineers, programmers. What's the purpose for NASA? Why does NASA exist? It all had to do with our pursuit of discovering alien life in outer space. So consequently, NASA is searching for living neighbors in space. And you can go on their website, nasa.gov, and you find this information for yourself. Quoting from their hunt for life in space, many scientists believe we are not alone in the universe. It's probable, they say, that life could have arisen on at least some of the billions of planets thought to exist in our gal galaxy alone just as it did here on planet Earth. This basic question about our place in the universe is one that may be answered by scientific investigations. What are the next steps to finding life elsewhere? Experts from NASA and its partner institutions addressed this question on July 14, 2014, at a public talk held at NASA headquarters in Washington. They outlined NASA's roadmap to the search for life in the universe an ongoing journey that involves a number of current and future telescopes." End of quote. Matt Mountain, director and Webb telescope scientist at the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore said, and I quote, just imagine the moment when we find potential signatures of life. Imagine the moment when the world wakes up and the human race realizes that it's no longer it's, its long loneliness in time and space may be over. The possibility we're no longer alone in the universe." End of quote. Now, keeping these things in mind and our search for life in outer space, I'm reminded of something that occurred in the annals of history recorded by Josephus, the infamous Jewish priest, scholar, and historian in a chapter of his book entitled Wars of the Jews. And he was describing what was taking place at the fall of Jerusalem on August 9th, 70 AD. Listen to this, quoting Josephus. Besides these signs, a few days after that feast of unleavened bread, on the one and 20th day of the month of Artemisius, which is our April and May, a certain prodigious and incredible phenomenon appeared. I suppose the account of it would seem to be a fable were it not related by those that saw it, and were not the events that followed it of so considerable a nature as to deserve such signals. For before sunsetting, chariots and troops of soldiers in their armor were seen running about among the clouds and surrounding the cities." End of quote. Chariots, troops of soldiers, in their armor were seen running about among the clouds and surrounding the cities. This was taking place in the skies over the city of Jerusalem the day it fell into the hands of the Romans. A compatriot counterpart to Josephus was Cornelius Tacitus, a Roman historian, senator, consul, and governor 
in his book called Histories. And on that day, the fall of Jerusalem, this is what he wrote. Upon the fall of Jerusalem to the Romans in 70 AD, quote, in the sky appeared a vision of armies in conflict, of glittering armor. There had been seen hosts joining battle in the skies, the fiery gleam of arms, the temple illuminated by a sudden radiance from the clouds. Josephus writing again, Moreover, the eastern gate of the inner court of the temple, which was of brass and vastly heavy, and had been with difficulty shut by twenty men, and rested upon a basis armed with iron, and had bolts fastened very deep into the firm floor, which was there made of one entire stone, that door was seen to be opened of its own accord about the sixth hour of the night. End of quote. Tacitus writes, the doors of the inner shrine were suddenly thrown open. End of quote. So something was happening as this battle was taking place in the skies that caused this extremely heavy door to be opened on its own accord that both these historians made note of in their writings on that day. Returning to Josephus, on the eighth day of the month of Nisan, and at the ninth hour of the night, so great a light shone round the altar and the holy house that it appeared to be bright daytime, which light lasted for half an hour. All right? So again, on this same day, this light emanated from the temple that was of unnatural, supernatural source, if you will. Tacitus wrote, The temple illuminated by a sudden radiance from the clouds. Are you getting a picture here? These two well-known, well-documented historians writing from two different viewpoints, Tacitus and Josephus, describe something taking place in the skies and brilliance of light emanating from the temple and the most the strongest door of doors of brass suddenly opened with no human influence. Returning to Sir Josephus, a, another thing he saw. Moreover, at that feast, which we call Pentecost, as the priests were going by night into the inner court of the temple, as their custom was, to perform their sacred ministrations, they said that in the first place they felt a quaking and heard a great noise. And after that, they heard a sound as of a great multitude saying, let us remove hence. They heard supernatural voices, voices that were not human. At the climax of all this activity, saying, let us remove hence. Tacitus supported that by saying, A voice of more than mortal tone was heard to cry that the gods were departing. At the same instant, there was a mighty stir as of departure. Wow. These men were witnessing, witnesses to something more than just a battle on earth. They were experiencing and writing of things that were supernatural taking place at the exact same time that the holy city of Jerusalem was falling into the hands of the Romans. Revelation 13 revisited. Verse 7, Revelation 13, The whole earth was amazed and followed after the beast, the Antichrist. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? And who is able to wage war with him? Verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. They worship him. Whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. And I guess if there was any essence in this particular report, that would be it. If you have an ear to hear, hear what's being said. 
In these modern, contemporary, sophisticated times, how could it be that the world would ever worship a man as a god? Through deception. Our subject is still UFOs and aliens in the last days. The whole earth was amazed. They worshiped the dragon because he gave his authority to the beast. Deception. The man of great deception, according to Daniel 11, 27 through 37 in the Message Bible, he will do whatever he pleases. He'll puff himself up and posture himself as greater than any god. He will even dare to brag and boast in defiance of the God of gods. He will deceive the many with great deception. And again, that falls in the category of what we're talking about concerning the UFOs and the so-called aliens. Revelation 13, verses 13 through 17 in the Message Bible. There is a second man who will work magical signs, dazzling people by making fire come down from heaven. He will use the magic given from the king, the first man, to dupe earth dwellers, getting them to make an image of the king that received the death blow and lived the image of the king will be animated so that it talks and then arranged that anyone not worshiping it would be killed. And that's what the scripture says. What you see on the screen now is a book released back in December 1986 called Replica. The author is Richard Bowker. In 2012, the book was redistributed, republished. And it's a fictional story of a look-alike president, a mechanical, robotic president that would replace the current president for safety and security reasons. An assassination attempt has been made on that president's life, and the decision was made that there should be a mechanical replication of him, a replica to rule in his place, in his representation. And as you read the story, you couldn't tell the difference between the two. Not even those that were on the staff could tell the difference between the two. It's a fascinating, intriguing read. I've had this book since 1986. And for it being a secular, fictional book, I was amazed to see its parallel with end time Bible prophecy. And so it's still available through the online bookstores. And I would invite you to get a copy of that and read it for yourself because, again, it, it secularizes what is prophesied in the scriptures of the Bible for the end days. And this is the closing message Do not fear. Isaiah 41 10. Do not fear. For I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Proverbs 4.23. This is very important because a lot of people don't think along these lines. Be careful, very careful, about what you think. Your thoughts run your life. That's another way of saying that as a man thinketh, so is he. Again, I invite you to return to this program and copy down these passages that you see, these 33 verses having to do with fear and anxiety and how the Lord tells us that no matter what goes on around us, we are not to fear. The key word here is do not be dismayed. Don't be shocked. Don't be caught off guard. You can go to crosswalk.com and see for yourself this these 33 scriptures having to do with this topic. You've heard me say this before. The more you know, the less you fear. That is key to our walk into a future that has been prophesied for over 2,000 years. And the whole purpose behind this program is not to fascinate us with the topic of UFOs, but to prepare us as a people not lacking in knowledge 
that these things were prophesied. And we're not to be dismayed. We're not to become anxious. We're not to be afraid of any of it. We're, in fact, if anything, we're to rejoice because these were the signs that were to occur only one time in the history of man. And then the end would come. So be knowledgeable. Read the Word. Study the Word. Get back into the prophecies. Familiarize yourself with the headlines of today and tomorrow as they were written thousands of years ago. This is the generation that will see with its eye the splitting of the eastern sky. And as we draw into this realm, especially the UFOs, keep these passages in Revelation in mind. That the earth was going to encounter an alien that will present himself live before the world. And the world would worship that alien in response to his passing his authority and his power onto the man who will rule the world. Sounds strange, doesn't it? Well, these things are being brought to the forefront by people who do not know end-time Bible prophecy. Pray about these things. I thank you for tuning in. I pray that these things are being of help to you and opening your vista of, of pursuit and hunger of the Word. Come back and see us again. We'll give more of these reports in our next episode. I'm Wally Wood. Thank you for watching. You have been watching the Revelation File Report with Wally Wood, a Wally Wood Ministries production from Houston, Texas. You are able to support the ministry by donating at wallywoodministries.com and by mail at Wally Wood Ministries, P.O. Box 42005, Houston, Texas 77242. Wally is available to present full two-hour forums in your city called the Revelation File News Forum. For more details, contact Andy Valdez at 713-560-3348 or by email at andy at andyvalidez.com. The Revelation File News Report is a weekly update of global trends in the news as it aligns with end-time Bible prophecy. Tune in again next time, and be sure to like and share this channel.